Hi everyone, Jessica here from Stitching Colours. Welcome back. Today is the 16th of September 2023 and I am back for a stitching update. I have been missing for the last few weeks and sorry, Luna is pumping the trophy. Come here. So your normal traditional sometimes happens looks at Luna. She sees something out the window that's far more interesting than being on camera. <laughs> so unfortunately work has gotten ahead of me in my stitching for the last few weeks and I haven't got much stitching done and when I have found time it hasn't been for very long so over the past three weeks I've done 13,128 stitches across nine pieces and you'll notice that there's about three pieces that seem to have gotten the most of the stitching and they're pieces that I've worked on over the weekends but even my weekends haven't been safe in that I have pretty much been working every weekend doing reporting and things like that. Unfortunately, it seems that every time I sat down to get some of the overdue reporting that I had done, I had other things that came up, whether it was emergency work or some other reports that needed to go out that I had to review. Unfortunately, some of the reports, uh, there's only two of us in the company that can review them and get them sent off. And it just so happened that I would sit down and then there would be three or four of them that I'd have to get sorted that day. And it fills in a lot of time at 20 minutes to half an hour a piece. So just one of those things. <laughs> Anyway, moving on, I have got nine pieces to show today. One of them is a finish and two of them are new starts. So let's get started with that. First piece I have to show today is Planets Align number six. This is a tilt and craft piece, which is under the common creative license. And this is stitched on 25 count one over one. You should be seeing where you saw it last time. And this one has had quite a bit of stitching because it is my Saturday piece. It means I always aim or I need to get a thousand stitches on it or 1200 I tend to aim for before I move on to any other pieces. So here's where it is now. So this has had 3,708 stitches. So you will notice, or you may notice, I should say, I, last weekend when I was working on it, I filled in all of my parked threads. So that's that done. And I'm really happy with the progress on this one. So this will get some progress later on today. The next piece I have is the Mythical Alphabet Stitch Along from 2020 from Pain Free Crafts and this is based on the artwork by Stanley Morrison. So last time you saw it I think I was finished the P, I might have finished the Q but I've now finished the R as well. So you should be seeing where you saw it last time and here is where it is now. So, hang on, this is getting awkward to show and actually be able to see what, make sure it's actually in camera. Here we go, I think we're good. So for a closer look, at, uh, particularly at the P, Q and R, so P is a Pegasus, the Q is the Quizzel Kotal and R is a Rompo. 
never heard of a romper but i have to say it's very cute i'm not sure it's showing very well on camera but here is its head and you've got the front paws the back paws and then its tail weaves around so i'm really happy with how that's coming along and this hopefully will be a finish for the end of the year much like my planets align but the issue is that there are still quite a few letters left and I may not quite get there. It's just the, what is it? S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Eight letters left. <laughs> and in three months, it's possible, but I just don't know how my stitching is going to go. We are ramping up with work for the busy summer period so it doesn't help that we've got our business development manager chasing work left right and center coming up with new opportunities and things like that great idea but also very frustrating because I've got enough work as it is and the training I've got just not quite there yet so uh, really i'd love to get someone experienced in that can deal with some of that stuff and sort it out but unfortunately it's very unlikely to happen getting anyone fully qualified is not easy as has been found especially where we are in the world in new zealand all right the next piece i have is Lackadaisy Card Sharp. This is a Heaven and Earth Designs piece based on the artwork by Tracy Butler. And this one got, oh, hang on. The Mythical Alphabet got 2,969 stitches. And that was on 25, uh, 28 count two over two. And the Lackadaisy Card Shark here is a Heaven and Earth Designs piece based on the artwork by Tracy Butler and this is stitched on 25 count 1 over 1 and has had 657 stitches on it. So this is where it's at now. You should have already seen where it was at but you can see I finished off this page down here and I started on the next page. So I'm really happy with the progress on this one. I just wish it had a little bit more progress, but it just doesn't seem to be one of the pieces I go to immediately at the moment. So it's something to think about and hopefully it'll get more progress next year. Hi Luna. Come here. <laughs> so Luna is back. She wants to go watch the people outside. <laughs> All right. The next piece I have is another pain free crafts piece. And this one is stitched on 25 count one over one. And this is Archer, which is based on the artwork by Ismira. And this one got 641 stitches on it. So this piece, I'm trying to get it into a position where it will be a really good finish for next year. She is over 50%. It's, she's about 52%. And I kind of want to get it a little bit further along. But it's just finding the time. And also it seems that whenever I go to work on her, big things with work seem to come up. It's just bad timing. <laughs> Much like a lot of these things. All right, the next piece I have. Ah, oh, yep, is a new start. So this is a Gecko Rouge piece and this is based on the artwork by Jenny Parks. This is Harry Porter. So this got to start on the 1st of September 
and this has had 2096 stitches on it so far so you can't exactly see much it is on 25 count one over one and this one I've decided to go with the typewriter method by Paige I thought I'd do a bit of a test and see how it goes so you can see I've you may not be able to see I've got three colors in there at this point <laughs> so yeah this is about two percent of it and I'm really happy with it and so far I'm just waiting for the really heavy confetti to come in because I know where the cats are there is a lot of confetti the next one I have is Autumn Dragon so this is stitched on 25 count one over one and this one had 834 stitches on it so what I did last time is I filled in a little bit more in here and then counted my way over to this horn that I originally started with and had to frog because it was in the fabric was the wrong direction or when I originally started it so I have discovered I do not like center starts because I find I get lost in many ways I'm not quite sure what direction I should go and whether I should go up down left right I finish a block and then I go I don't know where I want to go and I think before starting an area you kind of have to know where you're going if you're parking or anything like that because otherwise you'll get part, threads parked in weird spots that aren't going to help you when you do the next area. So I counted my way right up to the top and just started doing colour completion over the page. And I think actually this one was pretty much using the typewriter method as well. Yes, it would have been. It's something I'm trying out for September is just using that and seeing how I get on so it's interesting all right next I have got my Halloween village Afghan this is by Stony Creek and you should be seeing where you saw it last time and this one I am stitching on 28 count. Yes, 28 count, two over two. And I'm turning this into a wall hanging rather than an afghan. Just because having a cat means that using it as an afghan isn't all that practical because I wouldn't be happy washing it or constantly because you know how cats are fur everything it, it would turn white instead of gray just because she's molting so much at this moment in time anyway so here's where we're up to now yeah this one got 702 stitches on it and you can see where I was working was working on this crow and on the uh, checkerboard pattern at the bottom of this top row. So what I've got is I've got this page to finish and then I've got the next page to do, which is, oh, sorry, dropped the front piece of it but it's almost like a mirror for reflection of this end so it will be mirror image from where that pumpkin is to the other side so I've just got about a page and a half to go and I really want to get to the end of this top row of pages well before the end of the year hopefully it will be in October I will get there yeah so I'm really enjoying it when I find the time to work on it. It stitches up really quickly. It's just, it just hasn't had the time. Work has gone 
crazy and unfortunately that is being another sacrificed piece <laughs> okay and the last piece I've got is actually it's the second last piece <laughs> my second new start the one that I started last night I got very lucky in that I got home from work and then two or three minutes before that the mermaids of the sea seasons first part had been delivered into my emails so i decided to make a start last night and i got 1038 stitches on it so for those of you who may not realize this is a four part stitch along the first part was released last night around 4 40ish for those of us here in New Zealand and that was very exciting not best timing because I need to go on to my uh, planets aligned today but that's all right so here is what I've done so far so I chose what maybe um, in some ways considered a bit of a controversial fabric <laughs> to stitch it on. So while, when I got the advent calendar fabric box by Chromatic Alchemy back in 2020 or 2021, running a complete blank here, sorry, I it came with this fabric was which was a specialty dye one which was a Christmas one so it's got it's blue and it's got snowflakes on it but I looked at the colors and I kind of felt it really works for a sea piece as well it's really pretty blues and purples and I'm not I don't think you'll even notice the snowflakes once the stitching is fully in and it's just one of those things my wrap keeps coming down it's cold here we thought spring had arrived and then all of a sudden it's trying to rain and and freeze on us it's like we had this couple of beautiful days where it was like 21 degrees or 22 degrees by 10 o'clock in the morning and now we're back to overcast rainy weather so sad i guess spring has gone back into hibernation which is kind of amusing considering the first seasonal um mermaid that was released is spring <laughs> so here's my progress so far you'll see i've done the very outer border which was in a krennic i couldn't get the krennic so i used a the petite treasure braid conversion and i've done a little bit of the inner green the inner gray border as you can see here and then i got to the bottom and to a point where i could count off to stitch the mermaid <laughs> and got that done down here is where it says spring in mostly back stitching but there was some of that same outer border blue krennic or treasure braid in my case so yeah i was really happy with how it's coming along so far and the green is really pretty so i can't wait to keep going on this and get some more progress so this one is 28 count and i think It's because of how it, it's clearly got a front and a back because you can see this is the front and then the back is a lot more pale. I debated about doing it on the front versus the back and then went, look, it's an ocean piece. <laughs> it's going to be blue <laughs> and bright blue. So, yeah, I wasn't quite sure where else I would even be able to use this fabric. So I figured let's go for it. And this, worst comes to worst, the snowflakes can look like coral or other things that are under the sea. <laughs> uh, just a bit of fun. 
it'll be really interesting to see how it comes along and I can't wait to see what the next season will be released next month. I think from what I can tell there's about three and a half thousand stitches per, in this first part and because it's split up into four parts and each part is an individual season I think it should be pretty uniform in the amount of stitches per month. The only disappointing thing I will say with it is that the PDF that was received in the email is not pattern keeper compatible. So it is a little bit frustrating and I will work with it and deal with it but I just love things when they're pattern keeper compatible. <laughs> My own disappointment but I will get over that. Okay and the last piece I have to show you today is my finish which is Celtic Summer and this was almost a finish last time you saw it. It just had some beading and some back stitching to finish on it which has now been completed. This got 483 stitches and beads, etc. in it. And I'm really happy with how it looks. So, here we go. I don't think this lighting is doing it justice, but maybe if I zoom in a bit more, it's looking a bit better. So, Here she is, and you can see there are quite a few beads in this. And I will say for anyone considering doing the Celtic Summer one, when you see that there are two packets of these, uh, the gold beads or anything like that, you will use them. Or you'll at least use one and three quarters, one and a half packets, something like that. There are quite a few beads, but... I'm really happy with how it's come together. So, that's all I have to show with you today. And I guess I will see you next time. So, I have decided that I'm going to try going back to fortnightly videos in hopes that I will do better at videoing them and finding the time to actually stitch and actually having enough stitching to show. I kind of feel like if I've only done a couple hundred stitches on a piece, it's almost not worth it. You won't see any real difference. So I try and get a few more hundred stitches it's just a matter of what happens and how my days go so I think I will go back to fortnightly videos and see how things go at least for the meantime until work hopefully quietens down a little bit my trainee shouldn't be far away from putting in his application for his assessor's license, but it's probably not going to come through until after Christmas or the new year. So I've still got another three months of not being able to send him out to all that many jobs by himself. But even when he gets his assessor's license, that that's just a paperwork side of it saying, oh yeah, in theory on paper you can do a clearance. Not necessarily mean you can do it in reality. So still a bit of work to go there. But once he gets his assessor's license, we've got the clearance to get another new trainee. So at least that will help. Unfortunately, with how things are, we can't get any trained staff because of how many people are available nationwide that are trained and willing to migrate from their existing jobs so 
it's just one of those things that I have to be patient, hope for things to get a bit smoother and then move along. I mean, in some ways having a trainee make, uh, well, a new trainee will make it even more complicated because I'll have to deal with any issues that come up from things that happen and mitigate any issues. So just one of those things, but we're getting there. Things are looking up in his training process. As much as it is frustrating me and doing my head in right now, <laughs> we'll get there. Anyway, I will leave you all to it. I hope you have a good day and that your weather is nice outside, better than ours is here. You may be seeing a lot of light coming through from the window, but it's all overcast out there. It's not very nice. I'm very sad, <laughs> actually. To be honest, maybe it's for the best because if it was sunny or anything like that, I would have to go and mow my lawns. So, <laughs> just the way it is. Anyway, have a good week and I will see you in a couple of weeks. All right, bye.